Hey there, Sine here bringing you a quick video. Today we're going to move from one hosting company to another, in our case Liquid Web, to GoDaddy. Okay, so to move your WordPress site from being hosted at Liquid Web to being hosted at GoDaddy, for example, there are a few small things you'll need to have ready. The first is login credentials for your current hosting company, in this case Liquid Web. The second is login credentials for your new hosting company, in this case GoDaddy. You'll also need FTP credentials to both your new and old hosting. And if your domain was purchased somewhere other than where you're currently hosting or where you plan to host it, then you'll need the two DNS server names that you received from your new host. If you have those things, come on, let's get started. Okay, so step one before you move a site is, of course, to back up your database and your files, which we're going to cover right now. So there are a couple of different ways you can do this. I'm going to show you both. Uh, the first is to simply add uh, 2082 to the tail end of your domain, uh, add a colon, and that directs um, the URL to your control panel. You'll need to log in to your control panel and bada bing bada boom here you are. So there's another way uh, if if your web address doesn't allow the 2082 or the 2083 to be added to the end there is a second way to do that and that's to go to your actual web host. Uh, in this case it's Liquid Web. Log in. And there we go. So once you've logged in, uh, depending on your web host, and they're all a little bit different, uh, look around for the cPanel. I happen to know on this particular host, it's under the server name. So click and, and go to the cPanel here, and again, log in. So two different ways. One result, uh, we're still at the cPanel. So uh, once you're at the cPanel, use the PHP My Admin tool to back up and export that entire database. So I'm just going to touch this, click on export, click on custom, and our goal here is to back up all of the tables in his database. So I do want to save that to a file. I'm going to download that file directly to my computer. I do want both the structure and the data. And since this is going to be a unique installation, I'm not going to uh, include drop the table or create the database name because those two options won't be applicable to me. Okay, so I am going to just click go and then tell it where to come to on my site. Now I use a, an external tool called Heidi SQL, which is why it's offering to open that for me. But I do just want to save this to his website. Actually, um, I'm going to create a folder just for this move. Um, yeah, I'm just going to call this uh, move TFT. And I'm going to put his, this is the original, so I'm going to add the name. Okay, and in his case, there are two databases I do need to back up, so I'm going to go grab that second one as well. Okay, so that's all done. The second part of this first step is actually being able to download the files, the themes, the plugins, any assets or images that you have and bring them onto your local computer. Now, please be advised, there are tools that will duplicate this all into a single package and let you upload or download that. I'm old school, so I am going to do it manually. Uh, I do have an FTP client called FileZilla. If you don't know how to run that, uh, just check uh, below. I'll put a link to the FileZilla vi video that I created on how to use that. Uh, you are going to want to connect to uh, his or your your website, uh, your remote site. So I'm, I've got to go to the old one to get a copy of the file. So I'm going to click right here, connect, and then I'm going to download 
the files that I need. And, and if you're doing this yourself, you may have an assets folder, you may have an images folder, you probably have a WP upload folder in your WP content, uh, in which case you want to grab all of those. Now, if, if we had done this one way, it would have been in here. Now, I actually set it up so that it uses the assets folder. So I'm going to go get all of this and I'm just going to bring it down over to my local computer. I'm going to do these one at a time, uh, or you can go grab, like everything in public, you can bring over to some place on your local computer. Select all these files and start them downloading. So I'm just going to go through and grab all of these folders and move them over, and I'll be right back with you. Now the next part of this does require that we push the files up to the new location. Uh, and remember I told you in order to get started you were going to need the credentials for both the original hosting and the new hosting and that included the FTP credentials which I have set up here you know uh, now it goes to the correct host address still has the correct username and password and we're just going to connect to that location so once you're there you'll simply uh, again navigate back to the correct place and you'll begin pushing these files up now remember I told you um, I I'm a belts and suspenders kind of gal, so I've moved everything to my local computer and now I'm just going to push it back up. That includes the entire assets folder and the entire WP uh, WordPress folder. So I'm going to let that run for a little bit and I'll be back with you. Okay, I was sitting here watching this run and I thought I might take a moment and show you the setup that I did here on the new server since I kind of glossed over that. So basically, if you're using FileZilla, you click on New Site, you copy in the IP address here, uh, you change the login type to normal, you provide the username and password that you set up when you created this account, and the uh, connection can then be made. So once you click on Connect, it will it will begin. Uh, and once you once you've done that, once you've got that there, you're able to connect to that through uh, the connection manager here, or through. And this is the favorite way I like to do it is to pull this drop down and then just choose which one you want here. Now, a quick explanation about the type of files that we're moving and why we're moving them. In this particular installation, and this probably won't be true for you. But in this particular installation, we have WP, or WordPress, in its own folder. And there was a very specific need for that, uh, which I won't go into here. But, you know, if, if yours is outside of the root directory or the public HTML directory, uh, you may also have a subfolder. Uh, however, you know, it's not, it's not a requirement. Now, I set his site up to use the assets folder for all types of assets. That includes images, PDFs. Uh, audio files, video files, etc. because I want all my assets in one bucket and I don't want to have to go look for them if I need to reuse that asset and I'm not necessarily in the media library. So all of his assets are in there and then of course these three folders represent the folders required to run WordPress. Um, in, inside of this folder, the WP content folder, there are the MU plugins which stands for must use there are the normal plugins and then of course there are the themes and in his case we've got uh, the 2015 which was kind of the default theme and then he's running blue diamond and then I've set him up with a child theme uh, so that any customizations I make to blue diamond or, or to his site are not going to be overwritten the next time blue diamond comes out with a new version so it is really important that you get all of these themes, which is why I grabbed the whole folder when I pushed it up. Uh, and as you can see, there's quite a few files. We're going to be here a few minutes. So I'm just going to pause the video now and let that finish running. Then we'll continue with the next step. Okay then, the next step is of course to create the new database on the new host and import that content in from the SQL backup that we created. Now this is the original host, so I do need to navigate to the new host and log in there. In his case, this is GoDaddy. So I'm going to go to sign in. I'm going to provide the credentials. 
and sign in. Now from here, I'm just going to go to my products. And again, these are specific navigation tips for specific um, hosting companies. Yours may be slightly different, in which case, you know, make the appropriate adjustments. I am going to his hosting and I want to click on manage. Now this gets us into the control panel and although it looks a little bit different than the control panel on the other host, they are functionally the same. There are a number of the same elements and we're, we're just going to use one of those. Uh, one of the things we can do is create a MySQL database and we can do that manually and create the user and then uh, associate that user with that database. However, on this control panel there is an easier way that's to choose the MySQL database wizard and do both steps at one time, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to fill this in. Click the next step. Fill it this in. Provide a password and create the user. Now the user exists but it doesn't currently have any permissions on this site so I'm simply going to choose all privileges and then press enter and that will create the uh, both the user and the uh, database. So now it's just left to us to get the content out of the MySQL uh, file, the, the file that I downloaded to my local computer and import that into this database. We're going to do that right now. So to accomplish that step we're going to return home to the um, control panel and then we're going to use PHP my admin and we're going to import that data into a database that we've just created. There's the database we just created and I'm going to import the data. To do that I'm going to browse to the location on my hard drive where I stored that file. And if you'll remember, I believe it was right in here, and I created one specifically for the move, so it's right in here. So I'm going to go grab this original file, and I'm going to open that, and I'm going to say allow the interruption, that just keeps things nice and friendly, and then I'm going to click on go. Now this will take just a moment. Now this site is, for this particular client, is about 21 meg, so this will take a moment. We'll be right back. Okay, it did finish, and now all the tables are here. Now, if you were moving this from one domain to another, you would want to go into WP Options and change that uh, in the option value. There are two locations, one here at the site URL and another on the next page, and I think it's called Home. So when, in other words, that home URL is being used when somebody clicks on the home button, this is where they're going to be directed to. And you'll notice that those are two different uh, values. So let me go back to that first page and you can see that. So that's trend following trades and that's trend trolling fades slash WP. Okay, so that's uh, the third step out of the way. Uh, we have uh, set up the new database and we've imported content. Now I'm going to take a moment off camera and do the second database and then we'll continue with the overall site move. And again I'm doing this second one off camera because uh, for your installation you probably won't need that. Okay, be right back. Okay, that's the second database done and imported. So now our database exists, our users have permission and we now have a working uh, MySQL database out there for this site. So on to the next step. This next step is a little bit scary, so I want you to buckle up and hang on. I'm going to take you through it step by step. The next step involves editing a file that WordPress uses in order to connect to your database. And that file is the wp-config file. Now there are a couple of different ways you can get to this, but I'm going to recommend you jump over to the file manager and locate where your WordPress is installed. Again, remember in this case it's under WP, but chances are yours are going to be under public underscore HTML. So I'm just going to navigate in my case to WP and you'll see right here we have the WP config file and I'm going to click on edit 
And again, every host is a little bit different. You may have to search around for this a little bit. I'm going to click on edit. And then the thing you want to make sure of is that you, of course, don't change the encoding. That's one thing. And then you click on edit and you want to make sure that this username and database name are the same as what you just created and that this password is the same one that you just created. Now, other than that, it's very rare you'll have to make any other changes. And once you do make those changes, click Save Changes. Okay? So I've made no changes to save. So right now, because my database name and username remain the same, um, I don't have to make any kind of change at all. Okay, let's recap what we've done so far. We've backed up the original database and all of the files using FTP and we've downloaded those locally, our themes, our plugins, our assets, all our images. We have set up a new FTP for the new host. We have pushed all the files we downloaded to your local computer back up to the new remote. We've set up a new database in the control panel and we've imported all of the content from those two SQL files. We've updated the WP config file with the new database credentials. So at this point, it's a really, we're close to taking the next step. Now I do have to wait a little bit. Remember I do have a push happening and that push is taking quite a while. So the next step from here is a very simple one and that's to uh, head over to your registrar and update the DNS servers to point from your old site to your new hosting location. So we'll cover that right after these files finish uploading. Stay tuned. Okay, now for the uh, sixth step. And after this, it's just down to checking that everything is working and maybe a few little tweaks. But uh, here we are, we're at the new host and I also have the old host open. Now, I also need to uh, log in to the registrar uh, where the domain name was originally purchased and who is currently holding your DNS records. In other words, um, for example, I keep all my domain names registered on GoDaddy and then I actually use HostGator for my hosting. So in order to do this, I would log into GoDaddy and tell GoDaddy about my HostGator DNS servers. However, in this particular case, his registrar is GoDaddy and his hosting is also GoDaddy. So all we have to do here is, while we're still logged into his GoDaddy account, scroll down to the domain in question. And this part makes it really easy. If, you're, if your registrar is the same place where you're hosting, then it couldn't be easier. It's just a click, click, and you're done. Uh, if it's not, then I'll show you the same steps. So scroll down until you get to Manage DNS. And then you'll notice the name servers right here. So previously, he had name servers that pointed to this particular address and he got that address from his uh, hosting company. So we're going to change it now to the new hosting company and you'll see right here it says they can't display all the DNS information because it's not managed by them. Well we're about to change that because we're moving it back here. So I'm going to click on change and rather than manually type this in, which if you were moving uh, your hosting to someplace other than your registrar, you would simply type in the, the credentials they gave you, the, the two name servers they gave you. It'll be in the email they sent you when you set up your account. In our case, because it is on GoDaddy, I, all I have to do is choose default and save. Now at this point, uh, they're currently moving the DNS and updating all of the indexes out across the web. Now it will take a little while and I'll show you what I mean. Let's see, what's my DNS? There we go. So if I were to look for trend following trades right now, trend oh, where's the F? Followingtrades.com, you'll see that there's a uh, uh, well, right now, nothing. I just flipped the switch. It's it's being moved. So right now, it's not coming back as anything because it's it's not anything yet. Uh, shortly, these two will change. See here, there's already the first one. So it's already beginning to be valid across multiple states. Now, what this particular tool does is it queries your 
uh, domain from a number of different locations and gets back the record that you're looking for. So this, until all of these are green check marks and all of these remain green check marks after two or three checks across maybe 10 or 15 minutes, then we know it's fully updated and, and we can now rock and roll. So until this time, when somebody locates it, when somebody lands on the domain, what will happen is that DNS record will point them to the correct location. And we just, we're just waiting on that correct location to be updated all across the web. So once this is all green, all across the board for about 15 minutes in a row, checking it two or three times, then you're ready and it's time to check your website. I hope this video has helped you understand how to manually move your WordPress site from one host to another. In our case, we moved from Liquid Web to GoDaddy. If those aren't your hosts, then there are just slight adjustments you'll need to make. And I hope this video has been helpful enough to let you know what you're looking for. So, this is Sine saying thank you for joining me. Have a great day.